Hey dudes, welcome to Splat from the Past, the only 80s themed horror and sci-fi show where things can get totally radical. Now today, I will be welcoming one of the great Italian horror film actresses of all time, Stefania Cassini. You all remember her from Dario Argento's 1977 Italian horror classic, Suspiria. She'll be my first interview from that movie. She was also in Andy Warhol's Dracula, a classic I've always loved. And uh, she was in 1900, the historical epic with Robert De Niro and so many great actors. And uh, she was also in Andy Warhol's Bad. And uh, she's also a documentary filmmaker and so forth. I'm having her on the show today to talk about all of that stuff. And I can't wait. It's going to be so spectacular. So, uh, yeah, here is my interview with Stefania, Stefania Cassini. It's such an honor. Uh, thank you for taking the time today. Oh, no. It's a pleasure for me. <laughs> okay, so... Going back in time, I was reading that uh, your original career trajectory was you wanted to be an architect. Yeah, exactly. I studied for, but then I never drew any building. Thanks, God. <laughs> yeah, is that what you wanted to be early on? Yeah. You wanted to um, build beautiful landmarks like the Eiffel Tower, or the Leaning Tower of Pisa? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, was anybody in your family an architect? No, basically I chose this um, this study because it was the one that could leave me a little bit space of artistic, uh, you know, way to think. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, ch I chose this one. And, and frankly, later on, when I became a director, I found out it was a, a perfect, perfect kind of study because it teaches so many things about space, about, you know, mm -hmm. elements, about light, about the uh, composition of the you know, framing. So it turns out that um, I'm happy that I've done uh, this uh, long six years in a university. Mm -hmm. What what part of Italy are you originally from? Well, I'm from the north. I'm from the Alps. But basically, I studied in a polytechnic school of Milano. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my, my grandmother was Sicilian. And um, we all have the Italian temper on my mom's side of the family. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I have to watch out. <laughs> oh, yeah, Absolutely. My my uh, my mother's name is Donna, which is the name of a miniseries you did back in the nineties. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> so when did you decide that you wanted to be an actor? Uh, quite an early time, because I I I subscribed to the academy uh, of performing art when I was quite young. I was uh, fourteen. Mm hmm. And uh, while I was studying in my school, in my, what do you call it, Italian liceo, uh, I was also at night going to the Academy of Performing Art, mm -hmm. starting to become an actress. And then I went to theater very early, so I've done a lot of uh, theater in my early age. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then it turns out that I started in, in cinema, but um, definitely I, I wanted to be an actress since I was very young. Did you do any Shakespeare? No checks. Oh, yes. I did um, Dara Knight. Now, what's the name in, 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 uh, in English? Uh, La dodicesima notte. I don't remember in English. It is. Uh, oh, I had a very small part. It was one of my first parts in the theater. Um, I was one of the valet in the this uh, play. Mm -hmm. uh, I've done some Goldoni, I've done some Moliere. I was the 
youngest uh, actress uh, to perform in six character and in uh, searching for an author by Pirandello. I was in my 20s and I had um, very good reviews. <laughs> but then, uh, you know, theater, you have, to, you have to travel all day, every day, you go from one theater to the other for ages, you know. And the tournees, uh, we call in English, in, in French, is uh, long, it's very tiring. And I was very much attracted to movies, so, so I decided to do some tests. And uh, I was lucky that uh, Pietro Germi, which is a very talented director, mm-hmm. not out, unfortunately, um, uh, gave me the, the leading uh, role. And from then, uh, that started, uh, that's the point where my career started. Well, nice. You played uh, a lot of leads in the plays? A lot of? Uh, leads? Leading roles? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Nice. One of your earliest movies uh, was a classic that I love, uh, Andy Warhol's Dracula. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I did. Yeah. Yes, I did some movie before, but anyway, yeah, this is the, the, this is the film that... Uh, Basically, uh, I've been known in the United States for a very small audience, <laughs> but a very interesting one. Yeah. I love how um, Andy Warhol teamed up with Paul Morrissey to bring um, Dracula and Frankenstein to life uh, with the two movies he, they did together. How, how did you get cast in that? Well, at that time, I didn't speak a word of English. Now that now I'm doing uh, the best, but anyway, mm-hmm. at that time, uh, um, so uh, and Paul Morrissey came down to Italy with all the gang, you know. And they stay in a beautiful villa in the Atlantic. At that time, I was very much a um, uh, friend of uh, Dominique Darel, a, a French uh, actor. She is one of my sister in the movie. And she told me, yeah, you know, the girls are coming, they will be in uh, the villa in the Apia. Why don't you do the test? So I saw uh, Paul Morrissey, and uh, he liked me, but he said, you know, you must speak English, because I barely have a script. I mean, I like the actors improvise. So I said, uh, well, uh, when do you want to shoot? said, why in two months from now, okay, I'll be able to speak English by that time. So <laughs> I I went to a school, I was uh, for 12 hours a day, I had a different teacher with different accent in English, to learn English. Mm-hmm. So by, after a month, I, I was able to, to speak English and to, you know, to make some small improvisation, and uh, I did the test, and Paul said, well, you're perfect, so you will be in. Wow. I heard it only took three weeks to film. Yeah, 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 yeah. It wasn't that long, you know. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, you know, Paul knew what he wanted, so it was uh, just what he needed. And we had a lot of fun, actually, because we were all located in this beautiful villa nearby Roma and then Frascati, I guess. And then it was very funny to work with the Sica that I knew and, uh, you know, and I know my friends, Dominique Darrell and and, uh, Silvia Donizio that I know very well at the time. We were all young actresses, so we had a lot of fun, actually. Yeah. It must have been very long days, though, like 12-hour days. <laughs> oh, yeah, but we were young. <laughs> so, you know, when you're young and, you're, and you like what you're doing, you don't feel tired. Yeah. What, what was Andy Warhol like? A uh, very nice person, frankly. I remember him all the time. I mean, he was very much interested in science at that time. Mm-hmm. 
and uh, in fact, I was friend of a, of a new uh, scientist, like a black guy, that was making some important discovery, and so and he wanted me to introduce him. Uh, because it was very much interesting about the science at that time. And uh, he was a quiet person, you know, nothing, not so, I mean, you think uh, the world's gang, all the opathic or extravagantia, whatever. He was a very simple man, actually. And he was always in the kitchen with his dog, and uh, when it was this kind of, uh, you know, Evening at the villa where uh, everybody was there, uh, Polanski, uh, you know, you name it, they were there. Every, everyone who passed by Rome uh, was visiting the villa for uh, war again. And, um, and but he was always in the kitchen eating his hamburger with his, his small dog and very silent and drinking Coca Cola. <laughs> so. <laughs> Just like an employee, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Not this elegant guy at all. Just the Polaroid. At the time we recorded it also. Yeah, the Polaroid of the time you went to shoot Polaroid to everyone. Yeah. How about working with uh, Udu Kar? Oh, I love him. He's so nice guy. He's a really, really nice guy, Udu. And then I, I worked with him in, in Suspiria, but we didn't uh, have have a scene together, but he, he was such a sweet guy, and sometimes we, I mean, we call each other, how are you, and with the wet clothes. Yeah, <laughs> I think he's brilliant. I'm glad that uh, American audiences have gotten a taste of him over the years in movies like Ace Ventura, Pet Detective with Jim Carrey. He's really funny in that. And... Um, the, of course, the first Blade movie, which is kind of based on Italian vampire movies. Mm -hmm. I heard he... Uh, yeah, he's very talented. He's very talented actor. Yeah. I heard he lost uh, 20 pounds in a week filming this movie, and he couldn't stand because he was so weak. Yeah, it's true, because, you know, he has to be in Dracula, so very... Yeah. Clean <laughs> and white, and uh, you know, and he, he was incredible. I love the lot of things. It's so great when they, you know, when Giorgio Alessandro chop him off the, the legs, the, the arms, and everything, and he's still alive. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, it's such an underrated movie, I think. You worked um, with Andy Warhol again on Bad a few years later. Uh, yes, I love very much that scene because it gave me the occasion to go to New York and everything before, and it was very funny. It was really funny. And Andy used to come to the set and look around. There was Jeff Johnson who directed, and uh, uh, we became friends because Jeff Johnson was the editor of. Uh, of Paul Morrissey, so we knew from Rome, so, and it was such a, a great moment at that time in New York, I love it, and I was with my friend um, Claudio Mazenta, a photographer, a brilliant photographer, mm -hmm. and I remember that they sent me a first class ticket, and uh, I said to my friend Claudio, if you want to come to New York, no, this is my first time. And uh, he said, oh, yes, I know New York. And they said, okay, I can change this class ticket to the economy. Uh, and and they, our Italian let me do it. So I could fly with him, and, and I had a beautiful suite, you know, yeah. in New York. So we could uh, spare uh, the, the room. <laughs> it was very funny. Was that, was that your first uh, American movie experience? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was my first uh, New York experience. Yeah. It's got such a, a great cast. I've never seen it, but um, I can see it's got a great cast. Uh, Susan Tyrell, she was great. Uh, yeah, she was also great. And, um, and uh, Carol uh, Becker, she was great too. I mean, we had a lot of fun. 
King and Kitty Bruce and the the great Lord's tyranny. Oh my God, he must have been a character. <laughs> but uh, long before uh, you did that movie, you did uh, 1900, a historical epic. Yeah. I was uh, working. Yeah, because go ahead. I knew I knew, I knew Bernardo because it was a part of uh, of the. the, the friends and then we used to you know walk around and so um, and Bernardo told me okay my movie I would like to write a, a character for you and one day he came to me and he said aha we did uh, because he was working with Kim Akali writing mm-hmm. we did we did we did uh, we wrote a small part of very and very difficult to play. I'm, I'm sure you will can do it in fantastic way. And and he said, and I call the character maybe you no, know, because you're from the mountains, so it's an homage to your uh, to your uh, the way you come from. And I said, well, fantastic. And then uh, when I have to shoot, of course, I had a lot of preparation because I have to see many films of my play. And, and it was really, really nice should be seen because it was a very, very good thing, of course, uh, for many reasons, and it's not very well. But the Nado and all the, 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 the team, the kids, was so gentle and silent, and, uh, and each one tried not to, uh, you know, not to impose himself. Um, mm-hmm. I was working uh, with Bernardo Bertolucci. Oh, it's fantastic experience. Uh, Bernardo was really great, especially with the actors, because he loves so much the actors. And uh, he can give him any suggestion, and, and, uh, and you can see that he loves Was it like uh, working with the great Robert De Niro? Well, at the time he was a quite a shy guy because it was the first time in Italy, in, in a place where he never been before, and, and he was on that famous at the time. So the two guys, uh, Gerard and De Niro, they were young. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, but you know, Gerard, he was kind of laughing. Yeah. Always laughing and making jokes and, uh, and uh, drinking and uh, making fiesta at night. And then uh, the Nero, contrary, was very concentrated on his wall and he had a little book where he wrote all the notes, a little um, book, uh, black, I remember. He wrote everything. He was very serious, very concentrate on his work, very Stanislavski type, mm-hmm. but it was great. Did you uh, get to spend any time with Sterling Hayden? No, really. yeah. unfortunately. I heard that guy was a character. <laughs> yeah. How about, uh, did you interact at all with Donald Sutherland or Burt Lancaster? No, I just met them um, 
in the evening sometimes, uh, you know, with all the crew, because we used to eat all together in this uh, uh, fantastic, gigantic um, farm. Mm -hmm. And at night there was a big, a long table. We eat all together, actors, technicians, uh, the directors, and it was really spectacular. Wow. But I, I didn't uh, play with him, so. Wow, that must have been something. And then, of course, comes Dario Argento's classic, Suspiria. How, yeah. how did you get cast in that? Well, this is a funny story, because uh, I wasn't supposed to, to play this role. Uh, because it was, uh, this role was written for Daria Nicolodi. Mm -hmm. At that time, she was uh, the mistress uh, of Daria. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I don't know if it's real or not. Anyway, um, at a certain point, she broke uh, an uncle because uh, she was uh, supposed to dance, and, and, and in the rehearsal, she she fell down. Uh, so uh, Dario had to choose the actress to play place her, and he saw me. I was quite famous at the moment in Italy. And so I had the meeting and he said, okay, oh, well, you're perfect, but we're shooting in 20 days, so you, you, you must take a ballet dance course. So once again, uh, for uh, six, five, six, seven hours a day, I was the maestro to, you know, to learn how to dance, to how to move. And, uh, but I, I had a lot of fun because, uh, once again, Jessica Harper, she is a sweet, sweet, sweet lady. Mm -hmm. And so we got along together, and Alida Val, and she was incredible, very generous, very, very, very Italian. And, uh, and Miguel Bosé was one of the greatest, I mean, we were a kind of uh, very nice crew and all together. Mm -hmm. And Barbara Magnolfi as well. I mean, it was very, it, it was funny. It was really funny. Was that, was, was Dario great to work with? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. yes. Dario is a very talented director. He has some vision. He's a visionary man. And I believe that Suspiria is a fantastic, uh, um, I could say, a rock opera. <laughs> uh, with with the, the car of the, from the DOP, the music. Uh, I remember uh, I went with, uh, with Dario at the opening in Paris at the, this very big uh, cinema with wide, wide screen. And uh, the public was, a, the audience was really in the rear. Mm -hmm. And we didn't expect this, such a I mean, this kind of success was, they, they were really like, a, I mean, applauding every scene and, 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 and you know, it was like a kabuki theater. Yeah. <laughs> it was really good. We, we really enjoyed it. And, I, you know, every time I go to America, it's because there is one of those reunion about the horror um, movie, and sometimes there is a Suspiria reunion. So every time I come to the United States, I'm always surprised because there is a, a line of young guys that they are there just to have a, a you know, ask you to sign a photo or something. I mean, Suspiria is still uh, having an incredible amount of fun. Of funds. So um, sometimes I'm surprised because the, the guys are very young. So. I think they look at me and they think, yeah. who's this old lady? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, are, are, are you amazed by the impact that this movie has had all these years? Absolutely. I'm absolutely amazed. It's incredible. I was in the Philippines as well with an audience of young people screaming, and, you know, like, uh, I, I like it. Yeah. 
Did, did you see the remake? Yes, but I didn't like it. <laughs> I, it's obvious, no? <laughs> I, I haven't seen it yet. I'm very skeptical. But after you, after you told me, yeah, I don't think I want to see it. <laughs> it's completely different. It's completely different. There, yeah. there is not the magic uh, and the fantasy, you know. And there's not a fairy tale like Suspiria. Or it horror fairy tale, you know, this visionarity, this nothing is realistic, but since the first scene, you decide that you go through and, you know, you're lost to the, the idea of something realistic you're going to see. Um, the, the new Suspiria is all realistic and sometimes pathetic. Yeah. Were you familiar with his earlier movies, like Deep Red and The Bird with the Crystal Plumage? Yes, of course, I love it. Yeah. I was, uh, a, a fan of him. Are so you... when, he, when, he, when he asked me to, to play, I was really happy. Yeah, are you a big fan of horror? Yeah, no, not all. Mm-hmm. But uh, Dario, I like it a lot. Yeah. What, what, what do you think is the difference between Italian horror and American horror? Well, you know, uh, the Italian horror is like, it's more like a novel. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the structure is very interesting in terms of, uh, of story. And, um, and it's kind of sophisticated in terms of... Uh, Cinematography, cinematographer, because if you see, you know, the light is very interesting, especially in Dario, um, mm-hmm. his vision of um, the light is important, the, the, the set design, uh, very sophisticated, uh, um, you know, and in, in a certain way, there is something did you understand? I mean, you are scared because it's horror or, or thriller, you are scared. But but in a certain way, you know, that is not realistic in terms of per- pervert violence. Mm-hmm. So there is violence, of course, because it's an horror, yeah. but it's more subtle, it's more... Uh, unconscious, it's more, I don't know how to describe, I mean, I remember Chainsaw Massacre, I was really scared, I mean, and I'm still scared every time I see a, a kind of, uh, of weapon, and like a Chainsaw Massacre, and, uh, <laughs> and and this kind of violence is really strong, it's, I mean, it's uh, super realistic, in Dario, it's completely different. Yeah. You know, more subtle. You play with your unconscious care. Yeah, I agree with you about the uh, the novel uh, part. I also think that um, the, the the films are better shot too. You know, better photography. Yeah, exactly. You know, the Italians are really good at photographing. I think. So, what made you um, start directing movies and documentaries? Because when I was in the United States, then I decided to stay mm-hmm. after uh, Andy Warhol's bed. And uh, I started working in, for Italian television mm-hmm. as a journalist. And I started to do reportage and so and so. And then I met uh, Francesca Marciano, brilliant uh, writer. And, and we decided to write a movie that we shot in theory in New York. Mm-hmm. It's a story about a bunch of Italians, the young Italians, they tried to make it free, you know. The comedy, bitterness with comedy, I could say. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, so I decided that uh, maybe it was time for me to be behind the camera. 
I work as an actress again, but the more and more I started to be behind the camera. And after this movie that was actually uh, presented at the film festival in Venice, uh, I was uh, very much interested on, on writing as a journalist and, uh, and doing documentaries. Yeah. And I had the chance to, to, to go all around the world for documentaries and to meet incredible people. And little by little, I decided that it was more interesting for me, more intriguing um, to describe the reality to the documentary language than fiction. And uh, so uh, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> and then I became a producer because I wanted to do the things I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And now I don't know what I'm, I'm going to do. Maybe I will change again. You know, I'm like the cat, seven lives. <laughs> so, you, so you don't have anything that you're working on now? Yeah, I'm working in a... Well, I did two uh, virtual reality. One is uh, right now in the Festival of... Uh, Trieste, that's why I could not do the interview with you on, on a Friday because I will be in Trieste. And uh, and now I'm preparing actually an, um, an installation who's going to be an uh, interactive installation uh, against the violence that men uh, do to women. Yeah. That's great. So that's gonna be yeah, that's great. We need um, a documentary like that. Yeah, this this will be more than a documentary. It will be an installation and uh, something real that uh, you you as an audience you you interact with. And this is more interesting for me at the moment, more than cinema. Is the new technology, the possibility they give you to 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 rewrite. Um, emotions and make people feeling emotion in a different way than cinema, you know. So, um, with the interaction with virtual reality, with rebuilding a 360 world, uh, and the new technology are very interesting. Those kind of experimental uh, language. Yeah. Well, there's no better time for that, I think. And yeah, there's uh, there's really good technology out there. Uh, the way documentaries are being made. Yeah. Do you ever do you ever uh, get invited to horror conventions? Horror convention, yes, many times. Mhm. Do you have any? Suspiria. Yeah. And for Blackwell as well. Yeah. Do you have any lined up this year? No. Mm-hmm. Well, I hope you get invited to a convention in California. It would be great to meet you. Yeah, it would be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would love to come to California. So many years I haven't been in L.A. Mm-hmm. Well, Stefani, I thank you so much for coming on today. This was wonderful. And I hope uh, you get that documentary made, and I hope they invite you to a convention out here. <laughs> <laughs> I hope too. And thank you very much for giving me the occasion to speak about uh, to speak about uh, the people I've been working with, great my ma- maestro like uh, Petrucci, like uh, um, Dario Argento. I mean, it's important that people know more about those kind of film and directors. Oh, so nice. I thank you that you gave me this occasion. I'm sorry for my English. I probably made many mistakes. <laughs> it's but, okay. uh, <laughs> It's part of my charm. <laughs> yes, I agree. And I think you, you speak perfect English. Okay, so have a nice day. You have a great day Enjoy. yourself. Enjoy. Enjoy the sun. I will. <laughs> Arriba Dirci, ciao. Ciao, Ciao, ciao. <laughs> well, there you have it. Stefania Cassini. Ain't she a sweetheart? Oh, I love talking to people from different countries with different accents. 
She's a sweet lady. Great knowledge about Italian horror and Italian film. Um, if you like this video, everyone, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Add me as a friend on Facebook. Join my Tommy Kovac Comedian page on Facebook. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram and all that fun stuff. Well, that's all the time we have this week on Splat from the Past. Until next time, this is Tommy Throwback Kovac saying, there's no shame in living in the past because the present sucks. Later, dudes.